Over the past 24 hours, Wowhead has data mined a lot of info regarding the upcoming season of Discovery release. Information regarding these changes is based off the assumption that Wowhead has gotten these correctly, and after going through some of the data, it seems it's still very unclear. Agrand himself has commented on this in a tweet stating that anything found may or may not be in the game. I would take this information with more than a grain of salt, because some of it doesn't even really make sense. The new WoWhead articles outline a lot of changes to spells and abilities for every class. To be clear, there aren't that many new runes. Druid received the most new info on runes, followed by Hunter, Paladin, Rogue, and Warrior. Most of the important data mined information affects baseline abilities and their respective ranks, including mana cost and damage. I'm not going to go through every spell, but I will mention the most notable and important changes. A noticeable trend is that the runes work based off a percent of your mana, rather than them being ranked and downrankable now. We already had confirmation that the chest, leg, and glove slot would be available for rune engraving. Now we know that the other runes will be available on bracers, cloak, feet, helm, shoulders, and belt as well, for a total of 9 runes. Hunters and druids are getting some notable changes. Hunter's Raptor Strike is moving from a 6 second cooldown to 3. Trap tooltips do not mention requiring to be out of combat, and they also explicitly state a 40 yard range, which to me is extremely confusing. Does that mean we can place traps 40 yards away, or does that mean they have a 40 yard proc range? I haven't seen anyone comment on this, so if you have any insight on that, please let me know. I've reached out to Rockman regarding that, and he wasn't sure either. They also are receiving a huge buff to Wyvern Sting, allowing it to be cast in combat and sleeping the enemy for 30 seconds, all on a 1 minute cooldown. Hunters can tame deer and adders as well, as their companion pets. Perhaps in response to the Alliance receiving Wind Fury and Tremor through Druids and Paladins, they decided to give Hunters a new aspect. Hunters will give the ability to engrave their belt with a new rune, giving them Aspect of the Lion, which essentially provides Blessing of Kings to the Horde. On top of that, the Hunters themselves receive, receive an additional 10% bonus. Maybe we'll see an Aspect of Salvation in the future? Druid is receiving a buff to Tiger's Fury, which previously cost energy on a 1 second cooldown. It's now on a 30 second cooldown, but costs no energy and grants you 60. It also increases based on percentage rather than a flat amount. The Druid class is receiving six new runes as well, named Efflorescence, Everbloom, Gale Winds, Natural Reaction, Renewal, and Torrential Downpour. I can only imagine how happy flag runners right now are with some of these. Speaking of flag runners, on a quick side note, Warsong Gulch has received a few items that are available for reputation. This includes cloth, leather, and male helms that all reduce damage taken and chance to be crit by 5% in Warsong. Now that seems pretty good for getting across mid without getting nuked by the opposing team. Paladins are getting a new ret rune which will decrease your overall healing but increase your damage output. Initially rogues were thought to be receiving cheat death but it's been confirmed by Agrin that this won't be the case. There is a ranged weapon that was data mined for rogues that has been named Privateer's Ornate Pistol, but the text seems highly suited for a testing environment and not a live one if you take a look at it. Finally on the list we have Warriors receiving War Machine and Gladiator Stances runes. War Machine seems like it could substantially help out leveling, and it reminds me a bit of uh, Spirit Tap for Priests. Gladiator Stance is very unknown at this point because if we look at some of the abilities it references, it lists multiple fears, stuns, and a spell reflect. Shield Reflection, which is the spell reflect, is on the list, but if we hover over the tooltip, it states that it requires level 64. So perhaps all these warrior abilities that are listed out were just for testing purposes and they wanted to see what worked and what didn't and we won't actually know what's going to be available on release till it comes out. Priests only received clarification on the ability Power Word Barrier. Now we know it's not raid-wide and instead just for the party applied to. 
Druid idols, paladin librams, and shaman icons were also data mined. There's no actual information regarding what they do, but if you read their names, you can make some assumptions on them if you'd like. BFG world buffs, Ashenvale world buffs, and other world buffs were all data mined as well. The other world buffs appear to be from shrines, whereas the BFG and Ashenvale buffs are from their respective zones. Furthermore, the open world PvP event in Ashenvale has two buffs that occur during the event, providing the respective teams with additional health and damage if they're within range of their faction leader. Mounts were also data mined for both Horde and Alliance, and they're probably what you'd expect. Alliance are getting the Night Saber, and Horde are getting the Outrider Wolf. These mounts are also only usable in Ashenvale. Professions are getting some additions to them as well. Alchemists will have the ability to make Elixir of Colesked Regret. The devs teased a rune during BlizzCon that involved a corpse in a ritual, so maybe this is associated with unlocking that, or perhaps this could be something related to hardcore. Um, we're not sure yet. Blacksmiths can create Black Fathom Sharpening Stones, giving the player an additional 2% hit for 30 minutes. They also can create the Shifting Silver Breastplate, which causes their target to take additional damage at a 25% proc rate. Enchanters can create Black Fathom Mana Oil, giving the player 12 MP5 and 2% spell hit for 5 minutes. And if the numbers are correct, this means that casters will have to make 6 oils for every 1 sharpening stone. Leather workers get hit gloves with no base stats. They provide a 10 minute on use cooldown to provide a damage buff as well as a threat increase. Tailors will also be able to use extra planar spider silk boots, which grant no stats but give the player 7 additional damage and healing, as well as 1% spell hit. It provides an interesting on use effect that will reduce your threat, but also reduce the damage you take and deal by 50% for 6 seconds. Blizzard has also announced some quality of life and UI adjustments that will be pushed to ERA as well as hardcore servers, uh, which are actually currently available on the PTR to check out if you'd like. Some of the most notable changes to this are uh, the ability to finally see enemy cast bars and dot effects that show their remaining time on the enemy target's unit frame. From the post-BlizzCon developer Q&A session, we can also learn a few facts about the game. They've stated that there is no time frame that has been officially decided for any iteration of the level releases. They've also stated that raids from Classic WoW will return to SOD, such as Molten Core, Blackwing Lair, etc., but they may have changes made to them. New legendaries may also be created and they're eager to add new areas and quest chains associated. Blizzard is aware that smaller amounts of total PvP realms are healthier for PvP realms in general, leading to better faction balance. They're aware of the power gain from runes, so adjustments to the open world and monsters' power level will also be reflecting that. Shaman's enhancement specialization is envisioned to be focused more on dual wielding with Lava Lash, similar to TBC style play. They've also stated that we may see runes that enable archetypes like Smite Priest. Blizzard has acknowledged the importance of class fantasy and will not change racials or other races' access to other racials. However, they've hinted that certain things like weapon-related racials, such as the human sword skill, may be obtainable via other methods. This goes a step further with them saying that they're opening the thought to allowing non-dwarf priests to utilize Fear Ward or perhaps a, you know, a dwarf priest that can use Devouring Plague. Most of these changes will be based on community feedback and how people like and receive the changes, so it's important we all speak up about how we feel. Everyone's opinion is valid. I provided an overview of the quite large but very bloated data mined info released over the last 24 hours. Remember that none of this is completely confirmed, but rather just data in the game that's been mined. We won't know anything 100% for sure until it's released or confirmed by Blizzard themselves.
And that is all the major info I have for you providing the changes upcoming to Season of Discovery and the data mined info that was just released. This is Cutie, signing out.